right, today we're gonna show you how to sight in the open water. Unlike the swimming pool, sadly, there aren't nice thick lines on the floor to follow. Instead, it requires us to lift our eyes up above the surface level of the water and to sight. To sight the boys marking the course and generally just keep us going in the right direction. Sounds pretty straightforward. Well, actually, there's quite a big difference between sighting and sighting well. And if you sight well, you can save some serious time in the swim. And today, we're gonna show you how. So you've learned to swim well, maybe even cover the required distance for your upcoming event, maybe even be competitive. Well, that could all be thrown away if you can't sight. Oh, I might be being a bit harsh saying thrown away, but you definitely could be throwing away some valuable time. See, sighting isn't as simple as just lifting your whole head up out of the water. In fact, if you start doing that, you will see your swim pace dramatically drop and be left feeling extremely tired. See, the larger the movement of your head, the greater the impact it's going to have on your swim stroke and obviously your overall speed. So if you lift your whole head up out of the water to sight, your legs are going to counteract that by dropping. That's a large surface area to push through the water and therefore creating a lot of drag. That is going to slow you down and that we want to avoid. Instead, we want to fit the sighting seamlessly into a stroke without creating an additional movement. So let's break this one down into a few easy steps. Firstly, we're going to use the stroke to help give us lift to be able to sight. As we catch at the beginning of the stroke, we apply pressure down on the water. This pressure should activate the start of the sighting by helping us to lift our head up out of the water. Now then, rather than lifting our whole head out of the water, we're simply going to lift our eyes enough that we can see ahead, what we like to call crocodile eyes. This is important as any more lift could cause your legs to sink. Now you're probably wondering when you're supposed to breathe. Well, hang on, it's coming. As your arm recovers over the water, swing your head around to breathe to the opposite side, allowing you to breathe to the side as you normally would without disrupting your stroke. So there we go, the timing and the mechanics of the stroke stay exactly the same. The only difference is a slight lift of the head to bring the eyes above the water to be able to sight. Otherwise, everything else remains the same. Go give it a go, try it out. One thing to be careful of and be aware of is that you're not breathing and then sighting. It's incredibly common. Problem with it is you're sort of missing out on that natural lift from the catch phase at the beginning of the stroke, ends up being a bit jolty and almost a bit of an additional movement and makes it obviously harder for yourself. As with anything, when you're learning and pulling apart technique, you might find that you start to slow down initially before everything starts to come back together, but the benefits will be worth it. Now, in terms of how often you sight, obviously comes down to personal preference. But personally, I normally try and sight a couple of times in a row. That first sight, just to get my bearings, and then the second, perhaps to adjust my route. What you often find is on that first sight, you may not even see anything at all. You may not even spot the boy. So you need those additional sights to be able to see them, get your bearings and adjust the route subsequently. Being able to obviously sight multiple times in a row effortlessly is gonna make a big difference with that. Now, in terms of the time between each of those sights, I normally recommend around five to seven strokes. The reason for that is that if you leave it too long, you could find yourself going off course quite quickly, particularly if there's some currents in the open water. And if you start doing it too much, less than five continuously, you're gonna find it incredibly tiring. Now obviously practice makes perfect. The more you can practice, the better. So don't just simply leave it until you're in the open water. You can also practice sighting in the swimming pool, believe it or not. You can just start sighting for a few strokes within a workout and then carry on as normal. I mean, after all, swimming and following the black line in the bottom of the pool can get a bit boring at times. So any way to mix it up is great. Other things to be wary of is what you are sighting in the open water, particularly during events. So you could sight the boys marking the course, you can sight other athletes, you can also sight landmarks. And personally, I'll use all of those during an event for different reasons. So obviously athletes around you are gonna be nice and quick and easy to spot. Just a quick lift of the head, and you can see them. You may even be able to get away with not lifting the head and just following their feet within the water. Of course, do be careful that 
they are staying on course and they're not weaving all over the place. So a quick check every so often is probably wise. And then with the boys marking the course, I'd really recommend scouting out the course prior to the event, maybe even getting a bit of a recce of the course because once you're in the water during the event, and at water's level, it's amazing how hard it can be to actually see those boys, particularly when you've got a mass of other athletes around you. And then if you're doing a long out and back course where the boys are lined up into the distance, I'd also recommend actually sighting the boys into the distance as well as the immediate boy that you're about to pass. The reason for that is that, well, they don't always line up with one another. So rather than going straight to the immediate boy, you can actually just cuts across straight to that one in the distance, obviously without cutting the course. And then what if you can't see the boys all together? Well, this happens quite a lot, particularly when the sun is low and it's reflecting off the surface of the water. So this is where the scouting out and the recce of the course can be really useful because you can start to line up landmarks with boys or exit gantries, for instance. I would quite often do this for the exit gantries. They're so hard to see. I might line it up with a hotel or a big tree on the shoreline and I'd sight that rather than the exit gantry. Get all of these things right and you're going to be flying in the open water. Remember, Sight like a crocodile, swim like a fish, or something like that. Anyway, any more questions, drop them in the comment section down below. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you have, and don't forget to subscribe to GTN.